a myth centuries old. Bigfoot appears out of the bushes and makes those long striding steps. And the iconic film that became part of the legend. This was the most amazing thing to happen in almost the history of the world. October 20th, 1967, the Pacific Northwest. Rodeo cowboy Roger Patterson is deep in the woods with his 16 millimeter camera. Roger was a Bigfoot buff and had announced that he was gonna go out and film Bigfoot. Known as Bigfoot in North America, Yeti in Asia, and Sasquatch in Canada, the infamous creature has reportedly been spotted all over the world. Yet physical and photographic evidence of the beast is scarce until this film becomes a worldwide sensation. You're seeing in the Patterson film, Bigfoot shows up on cue. The creature is walking along a creek bed, making what I think are exaggerated steps, uh, an exaggerated gait, turns, looks at the camera, and is gone. The Patterson film was put out as, here's the proof. Here's proof that Bigfoot exists. The film awes Bigfoot believers and fascinates non-believers like Joe Nickel. The believers were prepared to see it. No matter what the film showed, they were going to believe it. And skeptics were going to be very dubious about it. But perhaps no one is more dubious than this man, and for good reason. I'm sitting in my living room at home watching television, and the announcer comes on and telling a story about these two rodeo cowboys who were out in the forest and ran upon a Bigfoot. And I look, and here's our gorilla suit walking across the television screen. Originally a vaudeville entertainer, in 1967, Philip Morris starts designing and selling gorilla costumes. I uh, received a call uh, from this fellow who introduced himself as Roger Patterson. I said, do you have a gorilla show? Or, or, no, no, no. Are you a magician? No, 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 no. He said, we're just going to play a gag on some people, just a joke. He said, how much are the suits? According to Morris, Patterson has several specific requirements for the suit. He wanted to know about, uh, did it look like a real gorilla? What about around the eyes? You can see where the person's eyes show through. I said, well, you get some makeup and put it around the person's eyes that are wearing the suit, and that will blend into the mask itself. They also wanted to know how to make it large and massive and he wanted some extra material. He's gonna to have to change the head. He's gonna to have to put these, and this is brilliant on Roger's part, these pendulous female breasts, which everybody thought, wow, that's the kind of detail. Nobody could make that up. It's so credible, it's so believable. Well, the check arrived and I sent the suit out to him. He called me back and said, uh, listen, he says, you can see uh, the zipper in the back of the suit. And I said, well, that's easy to overcome. Just get a hairbrush and brush it back and forth across the top of the zipper and it will disappear. That was the last I heard of him. Until he sees his gorilla suit on TV. My wife is in the kitchen and I yelled, I said, Amy, come here, you'll want to see this. She walks into the room and says, oh look, there's a gorilla suit. <laughs> Morris keeps quiet about his involvement, believing that Patterson will admit to faking the film. I didn't say anything about it to anybody and tell them the whole story on it because I thought our market was for magicians, be unethical, to sell them a costume and then later on tell the audience, well, listen, that's not a real gorilla, that's just a fella in a gorilla suit. But Patterson says it's the real thing and he earns thousands of dollars selling the rights to the film. And yes, years later, we too pay for the rights to use it in this episode. He went on television shows, radio shows, all the way across the country. And I realized that at a point that he was not going to tell everybody that it was a hoax. And I just sat back and was watching what he was going to do. And I think that his intentions were that he would get someone to produce a motion picture of Bigfoot and that he would literally make a fortune out of it. Five years after his footage debuts on TV, Roger Patterson dies of cancer, maintaining until the end that the film is genuine. In 2002, more than three decades after he first saw the film, Morris goes public with his story. I started announcing that, well, that's our gorilla suit. That's the gorilla suit that other magicians, another 10 or 20 magicians across the country use the very same suit. That's our suit. It's not a real Bigfoot. But Morris's revelation comes too late for many of the film's believers. People are so taken by the things they fall for. 
they're hugely invested now. Now they're fools if they were wrong. And as soon as you come in and rain on their parade, you find utter hostility. The first reaction was, no, you're lying. That is a real Bigfoot. I'm trying to think, how is it possible that this thing could fool people? Well, the suit was all right. It wasn't the, the very best gorilla suit ever made, but it was okay. But in broad daylight, it did not look like a real animal. I've talked with Phil Morris about this in retrospect, seeing how entrenched this film has become. I think he feels probably he should have come forward. We set out to verify Morris's story and found Bob Hieronymus, who says he is the man in the Bigfoot costume. Hieronymus and Morris have since become friends. Roger Patterson told Bob Hieronymus, walk like a gorilla. Bob Hieronymus was a rodeo cowboy. He had no idea what a gorilla should walk like. So he just walked like a normal person walking down the street and kind of waved his arms back and forth and thought that was, that was real show business. Bob Hieronymus has the size, the gait to be Bigfoot, to give it life, and I, mean, I think this is very important. There are people still living who remember seeing a Bigfoot suit in the trunk of Bob Hieronymus's mother's car. When it comes down to it, it's hard to improve upon Phil Morris as the source of the costume, Bob Hieronymus as the guy in the big suit and Roger Patterson as producer, director, and whatever else of this film. Just as Patterson stood by his story, so too does Morris. Rick Baker, who is Academy Award winner eight times, said to me one time, he said, Phil, he said, that was the worst gorilla suit I've ever seen in my life. And I said, yes, it's true, but think about this that there were over 10, 20, 30 million people who saw that film of Bigfoot walking through the forest and they thought it was a real suit. That's absolutely amazing. At the end of the day, when you've watched this figure stride and you've looked at it, I'm inclined to agree with the late John Napier from the Smithsonian who remarked famously, I can't see the zipper. I think that's the most concise way to view what happened.